Hey, what's up? Jigs are here. Commands Prompt, or CMD, is a versatile text-based interface that allows users to execute commands for various system tasks, from troubleshooting to network management. In this video, I will highlight essential CMD commands to help you efficiently manage your Windows PC. Let's go. For your convenience, please note that all commands featured in this video are listed in the description box. As most commands require administrative privileges, access command prompt and right-click on it to run the program as administrator. First on this list is the ping command, which is fundamental for troubleshooting network connectivity. When you enter ping, followed by an IP address or domain name, you initiate an echo request to the target device. The result is the measured round trip time in milliseconds, which reflects the connection speed and responsiveness, with lower values indicating better performance. The ipconfig command provides detailed information about your network configuration, including IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, subnet masks, and default gateways for all network adapters. ipconfig also supports additional parameters like slash display DNS, slash flush DNS for managing DNS cache, and many more that are invaluable for verifying network settings, configuring manual network setups, and troubleshooting connectivity issues. To prevent potential network conflicts, it's important to understand the function of each parameter before using it. You can click on the tag in the top right corner or find the link below to learn more about other parameters for ipconfig. To navigate your computer's directories and access files directly from the command line, you can use commands like dir. This command provides a comprehensive list of files and directories within a specific disk, including their names, modification dates and timestamps, along with the disk's volume label and serial number. While the cd command displays the name of the current directory on a specific drive, to simultaneously change both the current drive and directory, use the syntax cd slash d drive path where d switch indicates a drive change. Drive specifies the target drive and path designates the desired directory within that drive. If you want to navigate to the parent folder, simply enter cd and repeat if necessary. On the other hand, the mkdir command is used to create new directories. To create a directory within the current location, use the syntax mkdir new folder name. If you need to create a directory within an existing folder, specify the complete path like this, mkdir existing folder slash new folder. This allows you to construct directory structures with multiple levels. You can also view, modify, or remove file and directory attributes using the attrib command, which includes the ability to hide or unhide folders. To hide a folder, navigate to its directory and use the syntax attrib plus h plus s folder name. Note that the plus H sets the hidden attribute and the plus S sets the system attribute. If you want to do the opposite and make the folder visible again, use the same syntax but replace the plus signs with the minus this time. In case the task manager is inaccessible, you can alternatively use the task list command to view a comprehensive list of currently running processes, including its name, process ID or PID, memory usage, and other relevant information. Relatedly, the task kill command provides a way to terminate unnecessary running processes. You can specify the target process by either its PID or image name, which can be identified using the task list command. Enter task kill. Incorporate the T switch and use slash PID or slash IM to specify the process you want to end. With commands prompt, you also have the ability to power off or restart both local and remote computers individually using shutdown syntax. This command can be customized using various parameters such as slash S to initiate a shutdown, 
slash R to perform a restart after shutdown, or slash FW to access the firmware user interface or BIOS window upon the next restart. That's it. If I could help you, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions about the video or other problems with your Apple device, leave a comment below. See you next time. Bye.